We're introducing a resolution today, since the Senate resolution that says that if Russia or Belarus, or a proxy of Russia, explodes a nuclear device inside of Ukraine to um, stop the counteroffensive or to try to break the will of the Ukrainian people, such an attack should be considered an attack on NATO itself. We're of the belief that a nuclear weapon <clears throat> unleashed in Ukraine would irradiate large portions of Europe where we have NATO allies. And why are we doing this? President Biden says threat of Putin using tactical nuclear weapons is real. He, that's like the 20th story down. So with a sense of urgency, we're urging our colleagues here to get serious about what could happen in Ukraine. Moving the tactical nuclear weapons out of Russia to Belarus was unnerving and I think very provocative. The counteroffensive is moving slowly but steadily. They're looking for a break. They will commit the forces that have been trained uh, by the West, six or eight uh, regiments, thousands of well-trained, well-equipped forces will be put into the battle when they can exploit an opportunity. So the Ukrainians are patient. Russia has fortified their defensive positions. They've mined the whole country. They've been committing war crimes on steroids, very abusive uh, war being waged by Putin. But we're here to talk about something nobody else seems to want to talk about. I applaud President Biden for putting on the table that the threat of Putin using a nuclear weapon in Ukraine is real. And our message is to those around Putin that if you do this, if you follow his order, if he ever gives it, you can expect a massive response from NATO and you will be at war with NATO. I can't believe that NATO nations would allow their countries to be irradiated by a nuclear attack emanating in Ukraine, not, not to consider that attack on the uh, neighboring country and NATO writ large. So as we go into the 4th of July holiday, people are going to do things at home. They're going to meet with their constituents. They're going to travel. Uh, Senator Blumenthal and I want to put everybody in this body and this Congress on notice that the threat of a use of a nuclear device by Russia is real. And the best way to deter it is to give them clarity, the Russians, as to what happens if they do that. They will be in a war with NATO. Thank you. Uh, first, let me express my thanks to Senator Graham for his leadership, which has been constant, steadfast, courageous. And this effort has been bipartisan. The reason that we got our legislation or resolution through urging that Russia be declared a state sponsor of terrorism passed unanimously by the United States Senate is because we have been so bipartisan on our legislative efforts, on our trips to Ukraine, where we have seen firsthand the courage and determination of the Ukrainian people. And now on the battlefield, we are seeing it again. The progress has been slow but steady. If that progress continues, as likely it will, Putin could be tempted to use a tactical nuclear weapon or, just as likely, try to destroy the main nuclear power plant, both actions would have dire consequences for the health of Ukraine, but also surrounding NATO nations. Poland is at immediate risk. If the use of tactical nuclear weapons or destruction of a nuclear power plant causes radiation to spread, as almost certainly it would causing significant human harm. This is not a kind of reckless or panicky resolution. It's based on fact and science, and it is meant to send a message to Vladimir Putin and even more directly to his military. They will be destroyed. They will be 
eviscerated if they use tacti tactical nuclear weapons or if they destroy a nuclear plant in a way that threatens surrounding NATO nations. Article 5 is there for a reason. It doesn't protect only against a specific soldier crossing a boundary, but harm to our NATO allies triggers our obligation when it comes from a hostile force, as would happen if there were radiation that spread causing significant harm to human life. And this message ought to be taken seriously by Vladimir Putin's generals. His military risks total obliteration by NATO forces if they are so reckless and irrational as to resort to tactical nuclear weapons that endanger the world. And I'll just add, we'll take questions. Uh, nobody really thought he was going to go into Ukraine. Right. We were worried about it. We all, all authored pre-invasion sanctions that were not adopted. To think that Putin wouldn't do this is really irrational given what he has done. I mean, he's committed industrial level war crimes, thinking he will eventually get away with it. His goal now is to wear the West out, <clears throat> slow down the counteroffensive, get people in Washington and other capitals of the world to just break, and offer him some face-saving, life-saving um, deal. The Ukrainians are in it to win it. <clears throat> They're not interested in having to give up their land by force of arms to the American people. If he gets away with this Putin, there goes Taiwan. But I've been I was stationed in Europe during the Cold War. Uh, we always were worried about a, uh, breaking the fold of gap <clears throat> where Russia would just send, you know, hundreds of thousands of troops to try to destabilize Europe. Ronald Reagan put in tactical nuclear weapons instead of trying to match them man for man and tank for tank to let them know what the consequences of an invasion of Europe would look like. It was deterrence. It worked. We have a chance now to deter. Right. If you want to avoid a war between Russia and NATO, you need to jump on board with what we're trying to do. We're trying to send a clear signal, unequivocal signal, that if you go down the road of exploding a nuclear weapon in Ukraine to try to turn the tide of battle, that would be an attack on NATO. If you blow up a nuclear power plant to create chaos, that could be considered an attack on NATO. This is a conversation worth having. Let's have it now. If you want to deter war, you have to send clear signals the cost of action. And we have been very unclear to Putin, but now we need to be really clear. Thanks.